Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. In today's hopefully very short video we're talking about the latest firmware for the LG ZX. 65 inch version here and I received this firmware update I can't even remember maybe over a week ago already and more and more people are asking me actually to do some sort of a review some tests and I have done this over the last couple of days so you need to keep in mind that I'm not using the LG CX as a main monitor anymore or main screen anymore because here on my left side is the S95C which is now my main TV and my other TV the LG G2 is in my office which is heavily used actually by the way. This one was used over the last couple of days to test actually firmware and we're going to talk about in this video about yeah, maximum peak brightness in HDR and Dolby Vision gaming. Uh, we're going to talk about um, Dolby Vision 120Hz issues or maybe not and of course we're talking about the new home screen and yeah I would say let's start. Okay, so right now my TV, my LG ZX is on firmware 044135. So please keep in mind I'm here in Australia, not Austria, okay? Australia, very, very far away from Europe. So maybe you have a complete different firmware version, but maybe your firmware, no, sorry, firmware number, but maybe your firmware version is exactly the same, okay? So there is no, according to my info, not a global firmware for all the LG TVs or for the LG ZX, okay? So you can live in a different country and you may have exactly the same fixes, the same um, feature updates and stuff like that, but maybe you have a different number, okay? So please keep this in mind, okay? Again, I'm on this firmware update and there's nothing new in terms of updates, so... And this one is working fine so far, okay? So I haven't found any problem, not in terms of... Netflix app issues what we had in the past not in terms of audio return channel when I just briefly connected this back to my AV receiver and also not in terms of gaming but I would say let's start with maximum peak brightness in HDR gaming and every time when I'm measuring the maximum peak brightness on the CX or other TVs I'm also using real in-game footage actually to measure the maximum peak brightness because I think it's more more reliable than anything else okay so and I'm always using the game cyberpunk because we have really absolutely fantastic HDR effects in this game yes I know we have a little bit of a black level race but it is doesn't matter because this game is really really great so what I'm doing always is the same I'm measuring this light here and just to compare, because this is exactly more or less uh, also maximum peak brightness, I'm measuring this. So, and in terms of HDR10, so that's the Xbox Series X, of course. In terms of HDR10, I measured 600 and, see, I can't find it anymore, 655 candela or nits, 655 nits, which is absolutely okay. Okay, in my opinion. In terms of Dolby Vision, I measured a little bit less, 640 nits, which is um, was to expect because Dolby Vision has always a slightly lower maximum peak brightness or output. So for Dolby Vision, you would need to increase actually the in-game settings slightly to have this, the exact same maximum peak brightness as in HDR10. But again, those values, 650, 640 is exactly what I would expect from um, specular highlights on the LG CX. Of course, when I measured a um, 10% white pattern HDR10, I had a measurement or a maximum value of 680 nits, which is absolutely the value of what I was expecting. So in terms of maximum peak brightness in gaming and in uh, for Blu-rays or stuff like that, there is no issue at all with this firmware. Okay, so let's just quickly talk about 120 hertz in combination with Dolby Vision because I had a couple of comments and uh, people saying that um, this combination doesn't work anymore. So um, just to give you an idea what we're talking about. So Xbox Series X can uh, display 120 hertz in combination with Dolby Vision for gaming and this is working quite well. Um, you can see this in a moment. It will jump or change actually go away go away go away here yeah, Dolby Vision and I tested this on all four inputs so after the update everything is fine but but I know I don't know if you remember I had the issue that after an update Dolby Vision for gaming in combination with 120 hertz was not working for me anymore on if I remember correctly just on one input 
Okay, so if you're facing this problem right now with the CX after the latest update, then just maybe try a factory reset. I know it's a pain in the ass to do something like that, but I can. I think we can do it on support. I can't remember actually. Um, yeah, here you can uh, reset to initial initial settings. Give it a try and then uh, maybe uh, comment in the video if this helps because maybe you can help a couple of people um, or yeah, users actually to resolve this issue. But keep in mind, I had this issue in one of the firmware updates many, many months ago, okay, a long time ago and I was able to resolve it after I did a firmware, uh, sorry, a factory reset, okay. Again, painful, but give it a try. So now let's talk about the biggest feature update for the latest firmware. And I'm talking about the new home menu or user interface. So that's still the old one, okay? And in my opinion, um, very short, let's make it very quick. The best feature actually on the update or on the new home screen is actually that you can disable it, okay? Because I personally don't like it, okay? Let me, let me show you the new one, okay? Or let me actually show you how you can enable or disable it. So you go to general, you go to home settings, and then you have here your home screen style. And then uh, you can just enable the new one and you have to quit, of course, the menu. You press the home screen. The first time it takes longer than the second time, but that is the new user interface, okay? The new home screen. I personally don't like it. That's the same as on the G2 as far as I know. The same as on the G2. I personally don't like it. The, the main thing why I don't like it because I like to have or see the main picture when I'm using maybe the home button, okay? I'm not, maybe it's just me, but I don't like this that let's say if I'm watching a video or whatever, and obviously I can't show you um, some content on Netflix, but if I watch something on Netflix and maybe I like to change the input and maybe it's just me and maybe it's just very stupid, but doing doing so, I like to see still the picture running, okay, until I press uh, whatever new app I like to load or maybe a new input, okay. This is not the case anymore, okay, but anyway, maybe that's just me. So this is the new home screen. You have a lot of now files or templates or stuff like that. You can um, adjust this a little bit to your own liking and stuff like that, but again, I found um, yeah, the best thing is actually that you can yeah, disable it because I personally just don't like it. But again, put in the comment section if that's just me or maybe it's a little bit too much. So what I, I hope that they will never change actually the um, picture menu because I think or well, the option menu. So this is the old one and I think it is just much faster and it is absolutely everything what you need in my opinion. Because if you like to change the input actually, you have your input um, option as well, selector. And this is so quick. Again, for me, the new user interface, it's not necessary. But again, let me, let me talk about this. I hope that they never change this picture menu because I think this is far better than on the newer OLED TVs. I like this much better. It is, it is quicker. It is just, I like it far better than on my LG G2. Anyway, that's the new yeah, new major feature update with the latest firmware update, user interface from the latest OLED TVs. But again, in my opinion, best option is, or the best feature is, you can disable it. So let's talk about some apps on the TV, apps like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Stan, or whatever apps you're using in your country. So I'm mainly using the Netflix app and I'm showing you right now a game on the Xbox because I'm really worried about to getting a copyright strike for anything what you show on Netflix than Amazon Prime, okay? In terms of apps, and I have to admit mainly, I'm mainly, I'm mainly using the Amazon app and Netflix, okay? Netflix probably a little bit more, but Amazon also. I haven't experienced any issue at all. And if you remember, there was the problem at some point that at least I experienced that, that I watched Netflix, Netflix and then the app just closed, completely closed and it jumped back to the old um, input actually. So without any error message, without anything and after a couple of updates, Netflix updates and firmware updates, 
since then I haven't had this problem. This was also not to resolve with a factory reset, by the way, okay? So I can just say that during my testing, the days what I tested it, the apps working as they should be, okay? But if you experiencing anything, put it in the comment section. Okay, so let's talk about the audio return channel. And I apologize in advance if we have done this already in this video, but on the other hand, you wouldn't see this part. Okay. Anyway, let's talk about this. And what I can tell you is that when I had my CX connected to my AV receiver many, many months ago, I never ever had any problem. So after this update, I briefly connected it to my AV receiver, which is a pioneer. I don't know, an older model. Um, don't It doesn't support HDMI 2.1 and stuff like that, but I have haven't had any problem, okay? So when I turn on my TV, it turns on the AV, AV receiver. And when I turned off my TV, it also turned off the AV receiver, which is exactly what I expect. And also doing, yeah, watching a movie or something like that, there was never ever a problem. It changed the audio formats correctly, like uh, Dolby Digital to um, whatever, DTS and stuff like that, or stereo no problem with my combination but that's the point because this is just one combination out of millions because you have so many different soundbars nowadays you have different av receivers like crazy maybe you're using a hdmi splitter or whatever that's that's a problem okay so because i know audio return channel can be a pain in the ass okay but again on my tv and actually Am I the only one who thinks this game is looking really, really great? I, I like it. I like it. Anyway, that's wrong, wrong video. In my opinion, right now, no problem on my TV in combination with my AV receiver. But again, just one combination out of many. Okay. Did I miss anything in this video? Was there any topic which I yeah, just forgot to talk about? I, I'm not quite sure, but put in the comment section if there is anything. Um, the only last thing what I like to say is because I read, of course, a couple of comments from people that are saying, hey, picture quality has improved. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this. So let me just make one thing very clear. Um, DCX is here and here's my S95C. So it's very easy for me to compare actually the picture between CX and S95C. And I'm not even starting about uh, talking about maximum peak brightness because the S95C is just crushing this TV, okay? Full stop, okay? HDR looks so much better on the S95C. But when we're talking about SDR content, and this is what sometimes runs on this TV, and then I compare with the S95C. If we wouldn't, or if I wouldn't crank up the S95C like crazy, and I'm really talking about crazy bright, this picture is really, really good. And what I found is, especially with the internal apps like Netflix, Amazon, in terms of the picture quality from the internal apps, this TV is crazy good in terms of MPEG compression, noise in the picture. So I'm using an Apple TV on the S95C and I fully admit it, the, the, the point why I'm doing this is because of I don't trust Samsung in terms of firmware updates. Okay, that's why my S95C is completely offline. That's why I'm using Apple TV. But what I found is in some series uh, or movies and Netflix, and also this, this um, um, counts for HDR, uh, not talking about HDR peak brightness, okay? But in terms of a clean picture, the CX is really, really good and sometimes even better than this TV. But what I have to say is, and it's getting a little bit off topic because now we're talking about um, CX versus S95C and maybe I should do a different video about this, but people talking about picture quality on the CX. Yes, picture quality is really, really good, but um, as soon as you can compare to other high-end TV, you can see the flaws actually from this TV. And what I have, and this is bothering more and more, I have very fine horizontal and vertical lines. So I'm not sure if this is um, what you can call dirty screen effect. I doubt it. I think that's actually from the polarizer um, on the screen, you know, which is maybe when it was attached or installed, then you have this very fine lines because it's really like you, you, you do this like a line, you know, very, very fine lines. It's very hard to see, of course, here at the moment, but even here I can see it. And the brighter the light is or the screen is, let's say you have a very bright uh, background, 
the easier it is to spot those lines. And this is some, something what now bothers me a lot after I have seen this clean picture on the S95C. But that's a little bit off, off topic, okay? But in general, the picture quality from the ZX is really, really on a high-end level. And if you're mainly watching, again, this is absolutely off topic, but it doesn't matter. If you're mainly watching, let's say, SDR content and you hardly play maybe HDR content or whatever, there's no point to upgrade this TV. That's my opinion. But anyway, that's enough for this video. Let me know in the comment section if you experienced any issue with the latest firmware on the CX. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching me. I see you guys next time. Bye.